Hey, Hopers! So welcome to month three update. Um, it's literally so crazy to think that we're going to month four. Um, today is December 8th. And I just don't even, time has literally flown by. So month three was super awesome as all of our months thus far have been. Um, we were able to go to the farm again, um, which was super duper cool. It was really awesome to like go back and see the workers that we worked with the first time we went to the farm during month one. Um, and just being able to bless those hosts, Jesse McCare again, super, super sweet people. Um, they're 22 and 23 and run a farm in Africa, which is so, so cool. And it was really cool to be encouraged by them and also to encourage them. We obviously had Thanksgiving in November, um, which was really fun. It was so, so awesome to be with the squad. Um, I know a lot of people were really worried about like homesickness and being away from family. Cause like we had Halloween, but like this was the first like major actual holiday. Um, yeah, and so our squad just really came together and made it super duper fun. Um, we had like a scavenger hunt, like a photo scavenger hunt in the morning. Um, and then we like got all dressed up and took pictures. Um, we did a turkey trot in the morning, which was really fun. Um, yeah, I have a whole vlog about that which I'll link below, just about Thanksgiving Day. It was a super fun day though. There was tons of food, which was, we didn't really know what Thanksgiving was going to look like in the same way that like, we don't really know what Christmas is going to look like um, coming up. Just, we didn't know what was in the budget. Um, we didn't know what was like feasible to make. Um, yeah, so we had like mac and cheese and chicken and mashed potatoes and carrots and these things called fat cakes, which are like these donuts and they're so good. Um, yeah, so that was really, really a fun day. Um, we did not go to ministry that day, which was sad uh, because the following day was our last day of ministry um, at our care point with our kids. Um, that was a really good day. It was also really, really hard. Um, just knowing that like, I don't know what God's will is. It's a possibility I could never see those kids again. It's a possibility that I could. I just don't know what my future holds. And like, I will not put a definite decision of, oh, I'm never going to see them again because I genuinely don't know. Um, but yeah, so our last day at our care point, um, it was really good. It was, even though it was hard. Um, so that morning we were going to the farm the week after and that week that we were at the farm was everybody else's last week at the care point because only two teams go to the farm at a time. And so we were told Friday morning, the day after Thanksgiving, like which ended up being our last day at the care point that we could decide if Friday would be our last day at the care point or after the farm week, that next Tuesday would be our last day at the care point. And we as a team, it was really cool to see like the unity of Christ in us um, because we all were like, I think Friday, like today needs to be our last day just because we wanted to be present at the farm. We didn't want to be dreading that Tuesday of like coming back and having to say goodbye to our kids. Um, so that was really cool. We were literally all on the same page. We like went in a circle and we're like, okay, like what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? And like we all were thinking the exact same thing and like genuinely it wasn't just like trying to fit in like we genuinely all thought the same thing which was so cool to see that unity yeah so that friday was our last day at the care point um and it was such a good day it was so confirmed by god that that was supposed to be our last day typically um how it goes is like we have anywhere from like three to ten kids in the morning um who are like six and under who don't go to school yet and then around 2 33 sometimes 3 30 when that's typically when we leave, um, then the older kids come. So sometimes we get to see them, sometimes we don't. Um, yeah, but she was like, yeah, they finished their exams yesterday. So all of the kids, young and old, will be at the care point today. And we were like, oh my gosh, God, like, thank you for confirming that today is supposed to be our last day. We played so many games with them. It was just like super, super fun. Um, at the same time, it was really hard just knowing that we were leaving. So we like did a lesson with them. I did get to talk to my girl Sabonga and she's the one that I've read the Bible with a couple times 
and uh, always sing like I will call upon the Lord with her, which is super fun. And um, I had someone in our room had an extra travel Bible and they were like asking if someone wanted it and it's kind of a long story, but we were evangelizing one day and there was this guy that we had met and um, he didn't have a Bible and we got into this conversation. It was really, really awesome. Um, but I offered him my Bible because he was like, oh, I want to be like, I want to know the Bible like you do. And I was like, well, do you want my Bible? Took a lot of me to say that. Um, but he said, no, it's bright pink. So like, I understand. Um, but so I was like, come back on Tuesday and I can try and find a Bible for you. Anyway, this girl had a Bible. He did not end up coming back. So I didn't give him this Bible. So I had an extra travel Bible. And I was like, how perfect is this that I can also now give this to Sabonga because we've read the Bible together, because we kind of have that basis. It's not just like, oh, here's a Bible. It's like, this is something that we have genuinely like enjoyed reading together. There's something that's brought us together. So like, I want you to have this. Um, so that was really cool. And Swazi is a very jealous culture. Like, so when I gave it to her, like we were in private, like I gave it to her and I was like, go straight home. Like, do not show anybody. Um, don't show any of the kids this, um, just because I didn't want to get taken or things like that. Not that that's a bad thing to get taken, but, um, everyone needs the Bible. But yeah, so she like put it in her plate, pressed it against her chest and like <laughs> sprinted home. Some of the other girls were trying to hug her and she was like so determined. So yeah, but that was a really sweet moment. And when I said goodbye to her, it was so hard, but it was really cool because right after, like as I was saying goodbye to her, this little kid who I've only seen a couple times, I genuinely don't even know his name, grabbed my hand and it was just like so comforting. Like as one child was leaving, like realizing there are still so many more kids here to love. So then we brought everyone into the building, prayed over them um, and just talked to them and encourage them. Um, yeah. And then all of the kids bolted and it was so weird. Like they bolted so fast. We didn't even get to say goodbye to many of them. And there were still about 10 kids there, but they were all, we have a church building at our care point and they were all like hiding behind there. And we're like, what? Like, what are you doing? And, um, we saw one of our little girls, Ayanda walk out and one of my teammates, Sophie, went up to her and was like, Ayanda, are you okay? And she went to go see, like, sometimes they'll hit each other back there. Just like, it's hidden. Like the building's here and like the benches are here. So like they can go behind here and like, we can't see them. And so Sophie went back there to like, see if they were hitting each other or like whatever. And like all 10 of these kids were sobbing because we were leaving. And they, our shepherd told us that they didn't want to want to show us their emotion and that's why they were hiding and that's why all of our kids bolted home right after we said goodbye to them even though we were still going to be there for a few hours and she said yeah like in Swazi culture you are weak if you cry and they knew that they were going to cry and so they went home which was really hard but also very it was like heartbreaking but heartwarming at the same time because for a while like our kids didn't really show us that much affection like they would hug us and stuff but even like when we would roll up to the care point or like when we would roll up dropping other teams off at their care points like all the kids would run to the bus and like our kids just never did that and we were like are they indifferent to us like obviously we're still going to love them with everything that we are but like are they indifferent to us we don't really know um yeah and so like the fact that like they were all went home to cry and like these 10 kids were literally sobbing for the last hour that we were there again heartwarming but heartbreaking um yeah and it was really just cool to see our team come together and just like when one of us would start crying someone else would comfort and like just that continuous thing and for me like I'm not someone that cries a whole lot and so and sometimes I like feel guilty for that because then I think people don't like they think I don't care, but like I genuinely do. And Lily said to me, Call, I know you're not crying, but I know that your heart is still broken and you're still hurting. And when she said that, like I genuinely like just don't know if I've ever been quite comforted like that for someone to actually acknowledge that like I am hurting, but like just because I'm not expressing that in the same way that everyone else is, like doesn't mean I'm not hurting. Um, yeah, and that was just like a really sweet moment. So yeah, for the last hour at our care point, um, I was holding one of my little girls, Samile. Um, she's eight. And yeah, I was just literally holding her and praying that Jesus would comfort her heart. Um, 
because my arms can only comfort so much. Um, that's not the type of comfort that she truly needs. And it was just really cool because as I was like praying over her, as she was like, again, sobbing and attempting to put her sweatshirt over her face to cover it. And I just was like, honey, it's okay to cry. And it's just cultural differences, but it's so hard because if that's how you express things, that's okay. And if it's not, that's okay. And, but anyway, as I was praying over her, I just realized that like, as my heart was breaking, like her heart was breaking and I was able to comfort her, but obviously praying that Jesus would. But as my heart was breaking, Jesus was holding me like a little child too. And that was just like really cool just to like be comforting someone, but feel so comforted at the same time it was really, really awesome. Yeah, we got like picked up from there and like back to the compound and then we left for the farm that next week. So yeah, our last day, I don't even know how like to describe it besides like telling that story about those kids crying because that was like, okay, wow, like Jesus really loved through us. Like there's nothing in my, no bone in my body that could make that child cry over me leaving. Like there's nothing about me at all that could like make them upset but the fact that like Jesus like loved through our team so well like to these kids and that they felt Jesus's love through us is literally so freaking cool and like I don't know it's really cool as sad as it was it was just like oh my gosh like we got through to them like they did feel loved even if they didn't express it for two and a half months something else that is new is that I was asked to be a team leader for our team um, for the rest of the race a few days ago and I like prayed about it and I felt like the Lord was telling me yes so yeah I'm now a team leader which is really cool um, yeah and I actually I was not planning on doing this but I so the night that the day that they asked me they like asked us like pretty early in the morning and they were like hey by like nine tonight can you get back to us and so I prayed about it I felt like the Lord was telling me yes to step into this um so I said yes and that night was also like so they told us then the next day we were leaving Swazi to like come to debrief and I could not sleep that night and it was really hard and we had had like a big bry that night, um, so that was really fun. Um, and so we had a big bry, and it we did we usually eat at five, and we didn't eat till eight. And like we're typically like lights out. It's supposed to be nine thirty, but it wasn't like no one was even in their bedrooms until like ten thirty. And so then like that was already late, and then I could not sleep. And I think part of it was just like I was I didn't want to leave Swazi. I couldn't really process that we were going somewhere else to Nepal because that's all I've known for three months. And then plus the whole team leader thing, I was like, ah, this is so much. And so I like just wrote out a prayer and I just wanted to read this. Um, Jesus just kind of like had me write a letter to my team just about team leading. So to my team, first and for foremost, I'm not perfect, but y'all already know that because you give me constructive feedback. I'm going to mess up, so please give me grace not just in this moment, but when I actually need it. I'm super excited to help in leading our team, but I know struggles will come and that's when we'll cling to our team name of joy. I've led before, but I'm still learning to be a humble servant, God honoring, patient, caring, compassionate, and gentle leader. I want to take full hold of this opportunity to be led and lead all at once. Y'all, things may get uncomfy at times, but we will choose joy as we typically do. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry if I do things you don't like. That may just be the way it is, or maybe we can change something, but please always let me know. I want you to know that as I'm stepping into this role, so are you. I love that we take turns reading team times and obviously always making decisions together and being unified in Christ. I love that we have that unity. We are all the same, no one better and no one worse. God has confirmed that he has called me to this. Though it makes no sense to me, I thought back at training camp, he was telling me to keep away from leadership roles in this season because of my pride. But now I see that he is stripping my pride through leadership roles and learning to be humble in it. I think he has something big planned in learning how to please him through leadership. 
I love y'all if that wasn't obvious, and I'm praying no one's feelings are hurt. Okay, love you girls. Love call. So, yeah, that was really cool. Um, so I shared that with my team, and yeah, I'm really excited to team lead. A lot of it is, like, we have team time every day, and it's something different each day. Like, we have debrief on Sunday. Mondays are worship. Tuesdays are journey markers. Wednesday, blogging. Um, Thursday is feedback. And then Friday is free. And then Saturdays are Sabbath, so we don't have anything that day. Um, yeah, so I'll be, like, leading those. Um, we had uh, team leader training last night. So it's a lot. I'm really excited for it though. I think God has something really big planned and yeah, I'm just excited. Like I have led before, but I just think Jesus is really having me step into like a true, like humble servant, gentle, compassionate, empathetic leader. So yeah, that's kind of what's been up in month three. Um, so moving into like stuff God's been teaching me. Um, one is like about leadership, just like he's, been teaching me about how to be a humble leader. I've been a team leader for approximately two days at this point in time. And we just had training last night. Um, so I know he's going to teach me so much more through that, but just like being aware of the fact that like, I am striving to be humble. It's like, cause servant leaders use a lot, but I truly like feel like God's revealed to me just that like, I am called to serve and then lead. Um, so that's been really cool. And I'm excited to see what else he holds for that. I've definitely been learning also a lot and something I learned on debrief is just like true rest and like my soul is truly like renewed like when I read my Bible and spend time with Jesus and so many times especially in America we have so many distractions around us because like the world's so loud and even here like people like watch movies which is not bad but it's just like if you do that all the time and that's where you find your rest like that's clearly not right um, because our rest should purely be in the Lord so yeah that's been really cool like I learned that through month one, but actually now stepping into that and being like, when we have days, for example, like today, we had from 11 or like from 12 to five, literally to do anything we want. We can go to a mall, but like, I know that I need to stay here, like just rest, be in the word and get a few things done. Something the Lord has revealed to me is that one of my distractions has been social media, even though we don't have like wi-fi like we only can can maybe get it once a week um i still just like find myself all the time like on my phone being like what pictures should i post what captions should i do and just like yeah it's just become such a distraction and i don't want that so i'm cutting that out for um the month of nepal i won't be like on instagram or facebook at all i will still vlog um but that's that's it for this next month just because i really need to like refocus and then, yeah, he, Jesus has been teaching me some awesome things about, like, y you know, you always hear, like, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. And, like, what that actually means. And, like, what true surrender means. And denying yourself. And it's literally so cool. And just realizing that, like, true freedom is always found in denying yourself. And, like, submitting to the Lord. And just, like... I don't know, learning more about that and like Jesus being our groom. That always was a weird topic to me. And now like just learning like what that truly means. It's just so cool. And that's something that I've learned a lot through Freedom Seekers, um, which is like a Bible study for like, it was originally started for like insecurities and stuff. And literally, I don't know, Lord is just teaching me so many things about like true denial and true surrender that that needs to happen daily in the moment that, yeah, like, yeah, it's just, I don't know what I'll say about that, but like, I'm really excited and I can already see like such a change in like my attitude, not even just like what I'm doing, but like why I want to do it and my intentions in it. Like when I deny myself and I'm just like, Jesus, like today is, this is your day. Like this life, <laughs> it's not mine. It's yours. Like do whatever you want. Like I'm here to serve you. I'm here to worship you. Um, yeah. So that's just been literally so cool. And I love that big praises. So kind of moving into like prayer requests and praises is just that like Swazi was such an amazing three months. We had like team leaders who went on gap year last year who were like our team leaders for like the first three months. And now like that's a role I'll now be stepping into. Um, but yeah, just like she said, Sarah, she was like, it is so awesome that like you guys loved so hard that it's so hard to leave. And like, she just kept saying, she was like, if you guys like, 
if it wasn't hard to leave, like you didn't love hard enough. And just knowing that like we did love hard enough because it was so heartbreaking to leave our kids and the community there and just like friends we've made in Akumbi, which is like their local transportation and like walking down the road and like the waitress at Nisela has just been really cool. Um, just that Jesus allowed us to love with that love. And it wasn't like coming from our own like reserves. It was literally just like an overflow of the love that he's already filled us with, which is so cool. Another praise is just like, our team is still super awesome. And not that I'm like waiting for something bad to happen by any means, but I'm just like, God, how is it this good? Like all the time. So yeah, that's super cool. And like, we still, I've still like remained super duper healthy and people are always like, Colleen, how are you never getting sick? And I'm like, prayer, yo. Like people are always praying and it's amazing. And I really, really appreciate y'all. Also another praise is that I am fully funded. Woo. Um, with like my monthly donors still giving through May, um, which is super duper awesome. So yeah, with them still giving through May, I've raised like the rest of my support. Well, I did not, Jesus raised all of that, $15,800, that was not me, I can tell you that. That was all him, which is so cool. And just like knowing that like, at times fundraising was so stressful, but looking at the last three months, I'm like, it was worth every single bit and piece that of like stress that I ever went through, which was stupid, I should not have stress. Should have really put that in the Lord's hands. See, looking back, I see that. So some requests just overall for Nepal. Um, so real quick, Nepal, we leave tomorrow for Nepal and we will be there um, from the 10th to the 30th and we'll then have like a longer debrief after that. Um, yeah, so we are going into month four. Right now, our squad is actually going to be split up into two, like two teams will be um, church planting and then five teams, we are all with one ministry host but we'll, we're split up like three and two. So I'm, my team is with two other teams. So the group of three and what it's looking like right now is that we will be living in a hostel for the first week. Um, not tr quite sure what ministry looks like. That could be like hostel ministry. They talked about possibly going to like leprosy colonies, doing medical things. Um, just doing prayer walks um, because there's so many like temples and idols and false gods um, in Nepal just literally all around. Um, so doing a lot of prayer walks, things change. So open hands, open hands and willing hearts is what I keep saying. Um, yes, yeah, so that could be ministry for the first week. We will then be going to, so that'll be in Kathmandu. We'll then go to a uh, town province, I don't know, uh, Chipwan, and there we will do ministry. Again, not quite sure what that looks like. And then the week after we will most likely be trekking Again, not sure what that looks like. So yeah, just like be praying overall for that. Um, yeah, for against spiritual warfare, for health, because the food is so different. Um, yeah, for like ministry and just like literally having a positive attitude about whatever we're doing. Because I do love being outside, trekking three days into the wilderness to get to an unreached village sounds super awesome. But I also know that there are difficulties in that. And just like obviously having a positive mindset about that and a mindset like Christ. Um, yeah. So praying overall for that and just like the people we will come in contact with. It's a closed country, which is honestly so cool because one of our squad leaders said like, they're like, if it's a closed country, like that means that God is working there and like the Holy Spirit is so present there that they wanted to close it off to Christianity, which is so cool when you think about it. And so, yeah, it is a close country. You can be a Christian. You just can't like openly evangelize. So just that, like, please be praying that if it's in the Lord's will, that people would like ask questions that would lead us to sharing the gospel or however that looks, just that God's will would be done really. Yeah, and also just be praying for the whole team leader situation. I'm really excited about it. Just that the Lord would teach me a lot through it. And also our team leaders, like who have been our team leaders for the first three months, they like that they went on gap year last year. They are actually heading home. They were only supposed to be with us for the first three months. Yeah, so just for that transition, like them moving out of that role and us stepping in. Um, yeah, and just that the Lord would teach us a lot through that. So yeah, there are six no, there's seven team leaders. Um, if you want to pray for them by name, um, their names are, the guy's team leader is Sam, Sophie, Eggs, Catherine, Lexi, 
Liz, and myself. So yeah, if y'all would be praying for us, we would really appreciate it. And then also, yeah, just like be praying for intimacy, like with the Lord for myself, if that makes sense. Um, just that I would continue to deny myself every day and just, yeah, that I would just keep getting closer to him and learn more about his character. And yeah, so I think that's about all that I have. I'm really sorry that was so long, but at the same time, I love telling you guys about what's going on. So that's that. Yeah, so I love you guys. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Keep praising the Lord. Keep denying yourself. Yeah, I love you guys. Keep being missionaries wherever you are. Bye, Hopers. I love you.